Hey there, Pursuing Freedom friends. This is an exciting episode. I feel like a broken record, but I get excited about all the guests that come on the show because they're all so amazing in their own way. And today you're gonna to get to meet my friend Monica Anderson with Remax Peak to Peak in Winter Park, Colorado, which is a ski town. And um, Monica has been in real estate since 03 um, and went full time out on her own in the recession, like a genius, right, Monica? <laughs> Maybe oh eight years. So we're gonna hear a little bit about her story and getting rolling during that time period. And um, she's just impressed me because she's a leader in the industry nationwide with the organization she's involved in. She's a wife. She's a mom. She's a hardcore adventurer. She goes <laughs> rafting. She got married on the Grand Canyon. I just think that she's got an awesome story to share, and she's also really successful in her real estate business. So I'm really glad to have you on the show, Monica. And we always just kind of start from the beginning. I mean. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you what got you into real estate and, and what got you where you are today. And we'll go from there. All right. Well, my story is a little unconventional. It's um, it's kind of something that I, I really literally stumbled into. And it, I, I was fresh out of college, um, had been working my summers over in Estes Park as a day camp counselor, making eight dollars an hour. Um, I had a job in Omaha after college, lined up with Edward Jones Investments, and kind of had a quarter life crisis, I guess, so to speak, where I'm like, what am I doing? I don't want to be in Omaha anymore. This isn't going to work. I kind of felt like I was trapped in a box and called everybody I knew over in Estes and ended up landing a wrangling job to get back to Colorado. Wait, what? My this is the first time you've heard this, I think. I think so too. I'm my, sorry. I, I, I didn't know that I could love you more and now I do. So. <laughs> my dad is career military and of course that was just, oh, my daughter has a college degree and she's doing what? And I Wait, said, what, you know what? What were you wrangling? What were you wrangling? Cows? Horses. Horses. Oh, working over at Jackson Stables at the YMCA. <laughs> If you're listening, so, you can't see my face right now. I'm just talking at the thought of this. This is amazing. <laughs> but I knew this is where I want. This is where I love. This is where I thrived. Colorado is is home for me. And um, I said I'm going to give it a year, and I can always come home. Well, it's been going on 15 years, and I never looked back. <laughs> oh but uh, during my off, my days off, I I would go look for a career path and go around um, Estes Park and just try, try to figure out what the next step was. And I walked into a real estate office and they, the lady I ended up speaking with needed an assistant. And so on my days off, I was working as an assistant for her and she paid for me to get half my licensing. And somehow I ended up over in Winter Park and that was 0304 and I haven't left. So got That's into awesome. So when you first got over here, did you become a team member for another agent or did you, cause you just said you didn't go out on your own until several years later, right? Correct. So I actually started working at, um, in a nightly rental company um, called Beaver Village Condos um, over in Winter Park. And the lady who oh, was the GM of the company at the time was looking into starting her own real estate business. And so she formed Meyer Mountain Realty and it was her and I, and I worked full time for her nightly rental company, but also we sold condos there at Beaver Village. Okay. And kind of the stepping stone, kind of figuring it out together, but all, but she has always been my, my mentor. She was really who got that excitement going about real estate. So when you decided to go out on your own, which I think you said was 2008, did mm -hmm. you immediately go 100% commission or did you keep other jobs and then just start trying to build the database? I mean, how did you even launch it? So in 08, it was, I was color coding my planner between five different jobs oh <laughs> and where God. I would be in the morning, afternoon and night. Um, and on top of that, um, had just started over at Century 21 and was kind of helping with one of the more seasoned realtors there, doing some assistant work and mentoring with her, but then also trying to, to get my business going full time so I didn't have to work five jobs and not see my husband and be exhausted all day every day. So yeah. that was really the start for me. And it was 2010 where I really dove in full time and got rid of all the side jobs. And I think the best advice I had been given was focus on real estate and put all that extra time, all that extra energy that you're, you're putting into waitressing or um, working the front desk for a different company, 
focus that energy into your business and it will come. And so, so you that advice, you know, it was, I, I really can't even remember. It was something that another realtor in town at the time had said to me. And I thought it was so absurd because I'm like, how am I going to pay my bills if I'm 100% commission based? And I just remember it, it hit me. I heard it and I, I went with it and it worked out. Well, it's interesting that you say that because, and the reason I asked who gave you that advice, when in 2009, I got, I hired my first business coach and uh -huh. they did this personality profile on me. And as usual, it was spot on and kind of hilarious. And mm -hmm. it talked about um, this perpetual energy. And so a lot of folks that are in our industry have a lot of energy where we can kind of go, 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 go. It's two o'clock. We're in our kitchen, but we haven't even had anything to eat yet because we've just been in the zone. So, but she said, but the, the issue with these types of people is that is just that we tend to have multiple jobs, multiple projects, whatever the case might be. And she said, people like this tend, you know, to have a bartending job and then they're, they're selling network marketing on the side and then they're working in this other place and they're also doing real estate or they're also doing mortgages. And I started laughing because at the time I was doing just that. I was bartending two, two nights a week. I was selling skincare, Arbonne, you know, like <laughs> mortgages, working part-time at the airport for free airfare so that I could like, travel. You know, it was just ridiculous. And she said the exact same thing. She said, until you, well, she asked me of all the things you're doing, which one do you think can give you financial freedom? And I said that it would have to be the mortgage business. And she said, well, then I would recommend you cut everything out, harness all that energy and focus it into the one thing because ultimately you won't enjoy the freedom you're seeking anyway until you have right. the freedom. And it was the best, it was the best advice. But did you feel like when you went out on your own because you'd already been hustling for so long mm -hmm. and you, and you, that's what it is. It's hustling. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like you had the financial base to feel safe to go out on your own and then cut all the other crap? Or did you feel like it was just time to go and you just said, I'm going for it? You know, I was fortunate in that my husband really saw my future before I did. At the time, I thought that I wanted to throw everything away and become a nurse and go to nursing school and start working in a hospital and helping people that in that capacity. And my husband was, he just looked at me, he said, Monica, you're so good at what you do. If you can make it now as a full-time realtor in 2010, in the middle of the recession, he said, look at where we're going to be in five, 10 years. He's like, we can make this work. If you can do it now, then it's only going to get better. And he put his whole, he said, I will work. Well, I will take on that financial burden. I want you to focus on this and do what you're good at. And if it wasn't, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for him and his foresight, I probably would have just threw the towel in with real estate and been like, I'm done. I'm done. That's awesome. <laughs> and kudos to Ryan for seeing that and for pushing you. I, I, I think having that support is huge. And a lot of times we, have to by default we operate like islands in this business because we're self-employed and it's it's kind of all up to us and so it's so amazing when you have someone in your corner like that who is supporting you and saying it's going to be okay because you just mm -hmm. need it sometimes you know you do yeah. just to have that little bit of a, a reassurance you know when you're you're not feeling it yourself is it says a lot about the the teams that we build around ourselves yes definitely so um i know you guys have bought and sold a bit of real estate and have your own investment portfolio. So when did you guys start with getting properties? And I mean, how many have you bought over the past 10 years? I mean, you've had a handful, right? Right. It's, it's actually, we started, well, I bought my first home. Um, it was a little uh, low income place back in 05 um, over at Miller's Inn on Foskia's road. And um, just a little 850 square foot cabin on the river. Um, no sunshine, hardly ever, <laughs> but it was our little slice of heaven right there on Boston Street. And we could walk to everything. We owned that for 10 years and finally were able to sell that in 2014 and, and get into a, a little bit more comfort, comfortable home um, in the Tabernash area. Um, but that was, I would say we really started looking at um, building our, I call it our mini empire, <laughs> it's, what, it's what I'm trying to build through real estate. But we, um, when I became pregnant with my son, I said, you know, I really see 
this resort taking off. Um, they had Denver hadn't um, gotten the ski train back and running to Winter Park quite yet at that time, but there was talk that there was a new um, business coming in and taking over the management of the resort, which that happened to be Aspen and Vail. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Denver, the city of Denver actually owns the resort, but they lease out that management. And I said, gosh, you know, there's really no way that Denver, this, the city of Denver isn't going to get that connection with the train coming again. Right. And that was also during the time that they were building that light rail to DIA. And so I just kind of saw the writing on the wall, like now's the time these, these are record low prices um, in Winter Park. We really need to grab something. This will be Emmett's college fund. Um, our son's college fund. And ironically, we closed the day that I went into labor. Um, <laughs> that morning and that night, I'm delivering. And, um, and that ended up, we held on to that for a couple years. And it really did. That was really when our market started to blossom again, was with that artery, just that connection of public transportation back up to Winter Park, We're the only resort town in the nation that has that to a ski area. So it's, it's a, it's a really unique feature that I think people, most people who know about it are excited about it, which we're seeing. A lot of Denver families are looking to invest up here, which is exciting because they see that, hey, we can hop on a train, be there, you know, in the morning, ski all day, and then take the train home rather than sitting on the gridlock in I-70. So right. I think that um, says a whole lot. But then also, I think international travelers, it's only a matter of time before we start really seeing that start to open up. And I know Aspen and Vail have already had that hit home because they have more of the international travelers. That's kind of what they're known for. But I see that happening here in Winter Park, too, over the next few years. I think people, it's going to be more of a global, globally recognized resort. So in terms of just real estate investing in general and having rental properties and things like that, mm -hmm. do you do you feel that's a big part of what you talk to your clients about when you're speaking with them is just the impact that buying and holding and buying and selling and buying and renting and all these things has done for you as a family personally? I do. It's actually, um, I, it's, it's almost like a positive on both aspects because for our family, it's really allowed us a livelihood investing in real estate because of um, values going up and increasing and um, investing wisely. But then also a lot of my clients are coming up and they want to do that exactly themselves up here and they want to be able to rent it. They want to be able to find something that will be able to sustain itself or sustain their family, um, whether that's coming up to use it or with nightly rental revenue. Um, but it helps me to be able to speak to that because it is personal for me. And I, um, I don't think I answered that part of your question, but we also bought a um, property out in Page, Arizona, which uh, some people who know about it, it's, it's a really popular destination, but others don't really even know it's there yet. And so it's one of those blossoming areas that has provided a really great rental, um, rental revenue stream for our family. And, and hopefully over time, because that is a long-term investment, we'll be able to see that equity gain as well. So it's, it's nice to be able to talk to them at that level and have a personal investment in that level. Because um, I think if you don't have that, it's harder to gain that um, trust and credibility with, with investment buyers that maybe have already done this somewhere else. And they're like, wow, Winter Park's really becoming the the place to be in Colorado. Like, tell me about it. What can I do here? What, what are the rentals like? And if you don't have that um, background, it's hard to have those conversations and you might be able to have them, but I think it adds a personal touch when you can say, look, I've done this and, and it's really not as daunting as, as it may appear um, before you get into it. And then to have the resources to back it up too. Yeah, that's always been a big one for me is just trying to enlighten our clients that have never thought about either buying a place or have never thought about having multiple properties that it's actually much easier than you think. And it's, it's also incredibly powerful. I mean, it was such a game changer for my family to even be able to be living here in Winter Park thanks to our rental properties. So um, yeah, I mean, I just, I share that passion for not only what it's done for us, but what it, what it can do for our clients. And when we share that message with them and, and open their eyes to the possibilities, which is so exciting. Right. Um, I did want to also ask you, um, because living in a, in a resort town, 
you, so much of your business, your clients are not here belly to belly, face to face. I mean, how, how do they find you and how do you go about implementing strategies for sales and marketing when you're marketing to a community of folks that are all over the state and all over the country or maybe all over the world? How do they find you? It's a good question. Um, I, I have to say I'm very, I'm very blessed that I have such um, repeat business. I've got clients that um, have worked with me several times over. Um, they are the ones that spread my name. I just got a call last week from a gal who was super excited to talk to me. She's like, so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, they're family of mine. And they told me that there's no one else that I can talk to except for Monica Anderson because she changed their lives when it comes to their investment properties. And I just, it was such a compliment. I said, you know, it, it really is nice to hear that com coming from someone that I've never met because it is a thankless industry at times. Or you, you know, people leave or they move on and you don't see them again or you see them just during the showing, but you don't really get to have that FaceTime anymore. And I, I think it says a lot to that, that that's out there and that um, I get that repeat business that way. But I think more to, to answer your question, it's really more of the marketing, I think. Um, I do a lot with um, Zillow and Trulia um, to get my name out there. And then also I do a lot of local advertising too. So I know that you advertise at the foundry. I've, um, taken your lead and I'm doing that too. And, um, we do a lot of print advertising just in our local paper. Um, but I think really my biggest, um, stream of business is just my repeat clients and referrals. So and that, what's your method for staying top of mind? How do you stay in front of them? Um, well, it does make it difficult, especially when this is more of a second home market, because you don't just run into your clients at the store. Um, they're up here maybe once or twice a year, and you're lucky if you get to see them, or if you're not vacationing at the same time as they're here. But um, I do use this um, company called um, Personal Marketing Company, well, it's Personal Marketing Co., but um, what they do is right after closing, I, I um, send my clients mailing address and a picture of the home that they just bought or sold. And they basically have a five-year mailing plan to that client because the turnaround for people to buy and sell is usually five years. And that if you're in front of mind and I have some sort of mailer going out to them on top of an annual call, then they're gonna remember my name and think about Monica Anderson if they ever need real estate help or if a friend needs real estate help. Um, that keeps me front of mind with them. So that's automated for five years. That's amazing. It, it really is. And it has, I started this um, a couple years ago and I have definitely seen a huge return on investment. Wow. Between just my local friends who have bought um, or, and or sold from me up here um, saying, you know, I really love these, um, this mailer that you're doing. This is such good content. And that means a lot, you know, just that they recognize it, they appreciate it. Because then I know people that are out of state or maybe not here um, recognize it too. But on top of that, I think um, the average person, if you're not keeping in touch with them, they're going to forget your name pretty quickly after closing. And I've, I've spoken to quite a few buyers who, who are like, oh yeah, we just bought this place up here a couple years ago. And I'm like, oh really, who did you use? Gosh, what was, what was his name? What was her name? And they just, they have no clue. So I think that it's a valuable pipeline to, to keep in touch with those people and remain front of mind. And this has been a great resource for me to be able to do that. Well, there's no question that there's wealth in the database. And the irony is that I'll stand up in front of a, a room full of 30 real estate agents and ask how many of you are consistent with keeping in touch with your past clients, you know, show of hands. And I might get one person raising their hand. Most of them just sort of look at me sheepishly, like I need to be better at it. And it's, it's crazy because anytime there's any values in your business, you can look and see that you have, if you've been in business long enough and you have a database, you have a successful business. You can't fail. You just need to do the work. Just do the activity and get, you know, be in touch. Um, but when you first got started, how did you go about even building? Like, where did you start with, who did you send stuff to when you were just getting started out? Because, I mean, I think that's awesome when you have a mailing list, but when you don't or you're brand new, then what? Yeah. Um, so it, it was really just my sphere of influence. It was everyone I knew, my friends and family um, were the most important cheerleaders for me. Um, and, and just talking to people, getting out there, talking to people, 
um, letting everybody I know know that, hey, this is what I'm doing now. You know, Monica is not just a realtor and a front desk person <laughs> anymore. Like, this is my passion. This is, this is my career. And this is how I want to sustain my life for my family up here um, in the Winter Park area, which, as you know, can be difficult if you don't. I, I really feel like you kind of have to own your own business up here to, to find that success. So you're not juggling so much um, because we don't have the luxury of having so many big businesses other than really the resort and maybe some grocery chains that you can really find that career success and career path with. So that was really important to me is tapping into those people, having them spread the word, and then just being actively engaged even on social media. Um, I know Facebook was becoming a really, really big platform at that time. So 2010, I created my own bit, was one of the first realtors to have their own business page that they're putting st you know, data on and information that people might be interested in. Um, but that's also been a, a very big platform too. So say between my personal sphere and then really trying to tap into that social media avenue, those were my two biggest um, my two biggest avenues to gain some some of that immediate business. Awesome. And then when did you start getting involved? What organizations are you involved with? There's a couple real estate organizations that you're a part of, right? Mm -hmm. Nationally? Yeah, so it's um, um, it's called the Council of Residential Specialists. They uh, recently renamed the designation to um, Residential Real Estate Council. So the same thing kind of just swapped around a little bit, but CRS is what you'll hear nationwide. And um, it's a, it's a national, more of a national um, designation, but it's worldwide as well. And what I, what really gravitated me towards um, becoming more involved with CRS is that um, on top of it being a major networking platform for me. So I feel like I kind of network outside of my little sandbox here of Winter Park. I get to meet some pretty amazing realtors from all over the nation and and um, discuss ideas and and figure out what's working in their neck of the woods that might be be well received here in our second home market. Um, but on top of that, it's the education. And I feel like it was really the first time that I took a class, a real estate course that I left and I was pumped, man. I'm like, how come I didn't know this? Like, what have I been doing for the past five years? This is incredible information. Um, so those two were the biggest um, draws to at least get the designation and become more involved. But the other thing I really like about it, it's the only designation that you actually have to be actively selling real estate to get. So this, you have to be a serious realtor. You have to be making some pretty, um, substantial numbers um, in order to even start working to get your designation. And so to be able to, to know that I'm networking with these elite individuals from all across the country is, um, is really powerful. It's, it, um, it helps to not get so stagnant. I think we all get used to our little bubbles and communicating with the same people all the time and where you're getting, you're getting good information, but um, I also think it's good to get a refresh too. And so that's what it's brought to my business. So what kind of content did you learn in the course and where did you take it? Is this an online training or is this in a test or is this something you do local to your state or what? So, um, so we have, there's courses everywhere. So you can take an RR, C or CRS, we're now known as RRC, um, you can take a course anywhere that it's being held. Um, and that's what I found some of the, um, some of the savviest realtors do is that they realize, um, hey, you know, we're getting a lot of people from Texas up here. We get a lot of people to Winter Park from Texas. I'm going to check out the RRC course schedule for Texas, and I'm going to fly to Texas and take a course there so that I can network with those realtors. And when their clients are looking in Winter Park, they're going to think of me. That and there's a lot of realtors that do oh that That's and they do very, very well. And so, um, so I think, you know, on top of that, there's people that are involved in RRC. Um, I, I'm the state chair for Colorado this year, and we've got an, a fabulous team of board members that really um, does a great job of, um, we do a great job of promoting membership and spreading the word about RRC and, and um, and how important this designation really is. Um, and how I think many, that. Sorry to interrupt you. How many members are are there in Colorado? So we're the fourth largest chapter in the nation, um, and we've got about uh, one thousand seven hundred and fifty members. It's 
kind of bouncing right around that number. Um, I think the change we've also implemented just within our designation that you have to have two continuing education credits, whether that be a, a webinar online with national or um, going to a class. And so we've, we've started to implement, you know, if you're going to get this designation, you really have to be serious about education because that's what we're all about. Um, education and then networking and, and then, knowing. Sorry, what, what's the, do you know the numbers off the top of your head, the numbers that like minimum volume production that an agent needs to have to even qualify to take the course? I want to say, I wish I had my handbook actually. Um, I want to say you have to, the new, they just beefed up this year. They actually just kind of changed the strategy, but um, you have to have 60 transactions or 30 million in volume over the most recent last three years, and then 30 hours of RRC education. So that's one program. The pro program is 10 plus years as a licensed real estate agent, 150 transaction total, or an average of a million per year with at least 40 transactions, and then 16 hours of credit. So they've really um, upped the ante this year. It wasn't it wasn't as strict, but they've realized that there's a lot of people that maybe got their designation, but then have just been kind of coasting and not really becoming as active. And I think our um, national board was like, hey, you know, we need to shake things up. And if you're going to get this designation, we want it to be, we want it to be serious members that we're networking with. And that I know if I send you a referral that the percentage of you being able to close that and pay a referral payment back is, is pretty high because you're in the industry, you take it seriously. And I know that my clients are going to be given the, the same service as if you were to send someone to me. So that's awesome. It's, um, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's been um, taking my business to the next level for sure. And how did you become the state chair? How did that come about? So I've been involved. I, I've been involved with the board. I was kind of brought on and groomed over the last few years by um, a couple of our past state presidents and um, really enjoyed being involved at this level and going to the conferences. They're, they're always held at different venues. So um, this year there was one in Phoenix and then there's next year there's another conference in um, Vegas and people come from all over the world. But um, it was just more being involved, staying, staying involved, and then kind of being worked up into that position. Um, Whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know, kind of, but I really like it. So it was an easy yes, you know, to, to take. Um, what does, it, what does the, that responsibility entail? Are you traveling to one conference a year or do you travel to multiple? Are you, does some of it just require call, like Denver travel or, you know, what is it, what yeah. does it entail? Yeah, so it's it's quarterly. Um, so I in the spring we have our spring conferences in D.C. and that's every year. Our spring conferences are in Washington D.C. and so we go there. We kind of do um, networking together and brainstorming. So these mastermind sessions to figure out what direction we need to be going as leaders for RRC with our states. And then um, we have fall conferences, which are coming up in October in um, Boston. And then those are basically like end of year strategizing, um, planning for next year. And, and basically it's kind of those same conversations to get us, keep us on track and keep the momentum going um, for the next season. So there's um, those big two. And then there's uh, what we call celebration, which, um, it almost, I've heard a couple Keller Williams realtors say it reminds them of, is it a family reunion that they do with Keller Williams? Yeah, totally. Uh, so they kind of say it reminds them of that, but it's basically a big, like, it, it's a big um, rally where, you know, people, realtors from all over the state, they come together, they get really great information and content and um, listen to really motivational keynote speakers. And then you network and, and, um, and get to meet people from all around the world and, and learn just different ideas. I, it's been very enjoyable. I think the last celebration, I, I wasn't able to make it this year, but the year before, um, there was a whole realtor crew from Spain that came and, oh, wow. um, yeah, they flew to, to Phoenix. And, um, so that was really neat to see that there's just these active chapters that it's not just a, a U.S. thing. It's, it's a worldwide yeah designation so that's awesome and then do you do anything any involvement with 
Colorado Association of Realtors or National Association of Realtors or Inman or do you do any, do you also travel to those types of events? Um, or do you feel like with CRS that kind of fills your plate and, and you get what you need out of that kind of networking? They kind of merge, they kind of coincide. And actually this year will be the first year that they don't, but um, the Colorado State Convention is usually when we get to mingle with um, those uh, CAR representatives and um, that's usually when they have their administrative meetings is during, a, during that time. But this year they've kind of separated it. So now it's just their administrative portion in September and then there's a trade show in October. Um, so although we are involved and affiliated with NAR and CAR, it, they, we don't really, uh, there's a lot of those representatives that are part of CRS, but I don't, our, I, I guess our um, conferences and meetings don't really coincide sure. together. Um, but CAR does have their meetings in DC at the same time um, and NAR, and then they have um, legislative meetings and things like that too that we can attend. Um, but I haven't actually been involved in any of those. Well, I, mean, I think that once you find something that works, it's, you, you can only do so much, right? You have to have the rocks in your schedule. And sometimes you look at your schedule and you find that you have too many and you can't, you just can't do it all. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing though, is to just get involved with something at, at some level outside of your brokerage, maybe mm -hmm. outside of your town to do that networking because A, you learn, right? And you get ideas and you get inspiration. I mean, I do this with mortgage lenders um, a couple times a year and it's it always just resets everything for me and gives mm -hmm. me clarity, you know, to have people to bounce ideas with and all that. Yeah. Um, and then do you find that you, get, you do close quite a bit of referral business from out of state referrals or that you're able to refer out? You know, it's it's more so because we're more of a destination in a second home market. It's more people coming to us, um, and I, it's I realize Denver has like a really big relocation market, um, especially with military and, and families and things like that. But our most of my referrals are inbound, or um, I refer people to a, someone in Denver. But um, it's very rare that I have someone asking for out of state, especially just because we're such a destination zone here. Um, so yeah, I would say I get, I get quite a few. I have a lot of, um, realtors that refer me from Denver, which has really been great. And I, and a lot of those realtors are CRS, um, designees. So that's nice to know that I've got an active pipeline there. Um, but then I do get those from out of state too, that they're like, oh my gosh, Winter Park, Monica Anderson, you know, and it's because of that travel and that time commitment of, being having the FaceTime and meeting people. And I think that's really important, um, at least to me, is to be like, you know, I met someone in DC and they were just, they had their stuff together. And and if a client's looking there, that's the first person I think of and call. So sure. awesome. So what does the future look like for you? What, what kind of goals do you have on the horizon for you in the next one to three years? One to three, who? Well, I, you know, I definitely want to increase my volume of business. Um, right now, our, our inventory is tightened up, so it's, it's kind of choked down, I think, on all the realtors right now, where when you don't have inventory to sell, it's, it's hard to help your buyers find something. Um, so really, I think my goals are to just prom uh, promote some more of that listing activity, some more listing business so that I can create, I guess, more inventory for my buyers in that capacity. But I think also um, to grow my business and, and I've been actively trying to put a team together and, and I really like your um, method of doing that. You do a really good job of getting really good people to kind of handle the things that maybe we don't want to do in our business. And so I, I really feel like if I'm going to try to double my business in the next year to three, which I think is a um, doable goal, then I'm going to need to get some support. And so that's where I'm kind of stuck in a rut right now with my business is just finding those assets. Yeah. I haven't, it takes haven't been able to, to do that. Yeah. Well, we can sit down and talk about that because, yeah, there, we've done, we've had a lot of success, but we made a lot of mistakes along the way too. So, um, you know, I'm always looking to help other people navigate that because it is scary, but it's worth it. And there are good people out there. And it's also a lot about, you know, how do we, how do we train? How do we motivate? How do we identify where things could be better? So that's, that's what I love. I mean, I'm just obsessed with entrepreneurship in general. So I'm just, I love the systems. I love fine tuning and tweaking and, you know, and also motivating and inspiring and uplifting people. So, um, 
it's been fun. But um, what is the target number? Like how many, how many closings would you like to do in a year to double what you're doing now? To double? Well, I, so I know I made a pretty hefty goal at the start of the year of 84 sides and I'm not really meeting that at this point at this juncture for the year um, but I'm very close which is encouraging so um, I know that it's attainable but I would say if I could do so last year I did 58 sides um, if I could if I could get between 80 and 100 sides a year that would be doubling for me that would be good so hold on a second people that's a lot that's, that's a lot hefty and I need a team no, to do it. No, no, it's not unattainable. I'm just laughing because I know people that do 40 transactions and they're drowning. So how did you do 53 and, and, or how, like you have one assistant? I did. Yes. But she actually joined the Coast Guard. So now I'm down a man. Okay. <laughs> and good for her. If you're listening and you're a real estate agent and you're really awesome and you want to work with Monica, she might be needing it <laughs> when she gets 86 transactions. <laughs> wow. We do need to touch upon the fact that you also took a 14 day river, river rafting trip down the Grand Canyon with no cell service. You hear that real estate agents, a real estate agent, a realtor actually took 14 days off without cell service and her business is thriving. You can have a good life <laughs> and a successful business. Okay. So don't be afraid. Even if it slows down for a minute, when you get back, it was worth it. Sure, right, Monica? Yes. It, it was worth every minute of it for sure. It, it was so great awesome. to just disconnect for a little bit. I think that's the biggest gift we can give ourselves is just that time, that time to, to take a pause and, and recharge our own batteries. I'm shutting off on Wednesday for a week and I'm looking forward to it because ironically, when I take that time out of the trenches and just, mm -hmm. I'm just slowing down, I have so many ideas. It's not like my brain doesn't ever shut off from business. I just, it's when all these ideas come rushing and yeah. my team, they probably hate when I go on vacation because when I get back, I'm like, okay, so here's all the things we're going to do. I've got all these ideas. So it's not really taking time off as much as it's just like giving yourself some space to breathe and to think and to contemplate, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and to recover. It's, it's, you've got to recover in this business because that's the only way to keep going. It can really burn you out if you're just running at a breakneck pace the whole time, you know? Right. So, yeah. well, I'm impressed by you. I think you're, you're crushing it. Your son's adorable. Your husband is awesome. And uh, yeah, you're rocking this life. You're living the good life. So um, if somebody wants to reach out to you to mastermind or connect or buy a property, whatever, what, what's the best way to, to talk more about getting your CRS designation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so you can reach me anytime on my cell, which is 970-531-9680. Um, or my email address is just my name. It's Monica at Monica D Anderson.com. Awesome. Well, I appreciate having you on the show and listeners. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, do us a favor and go ahead and subscribe to pursuing freedom podcast on iTunes and give us a review because that's, going to help other folks find this great content with people that are amazing like Monica. And um, I love that we can all learn from one another and support each other in this journey. So thanks again, Monica. I appreciate having you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for putting it together. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. Okay, you too. Bye.